According to the Quran, Muslims are the best people in the world. In Surah 3, verse 110, Allah says to Muslims, you are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. Well, what about Jews, Christians, and other non-Muslims? Surah 98, verse 6, verily those who disbelieve in the religion of Islam, the Quran, and Prophet Muhammad from among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, and al-Mushrikun will abide in the fire of hell. They are the worst of creatures. Non-Muslims are the worst of creatures. Muslims are the best of peoples. It's kind of difficult to reconcile Western principles of tolerance and equality with the Quranic claim that anyone who rejects Muhammad is lower than a dog. Not surprisingly, given the utter inferiority of Jews and Christians, the Quran condemns friendship with us, as we read in Surah 5, verse 51. O you who believe, do not take the Jews and the Christians for friends. They are friends of each other. This doesn't mean that Muslims are simply to avoid us. Muslims are commanded to actively persecute unbelievers. Surah 48, verse 29 declares, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those who are with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Those who are with Muhammad, i.e. Muslims, are severe. Against whom? Unbelievers. Are merciful to whom? To their fellow Muslims. When Muhammad's forces were strong enough, Allah commanded him to fight unbelievers specifically because of their false beliefs. Surah 9, verse 73. O prophet, strive hard against the unbelievers and the hypocrites and be unyielding to them. Similarly, in Surah 9, verse 123, Allah commands Muslims, O you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness. Muslims are specifically commanded to fight Jews and Christians, the people of the book, in Surah 9, verse 29. Notice that every criterion for fighting us in this verse has to do with our religious beliefs or practices. Allah commands his followers to fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden, which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Muslims are commanded to fight us until we pay them not to fight us. Now, there are plenty of Muslims in the world who don't take these verses seriously. But Muhammad took them seriously. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6924, Muhammad says, I have been ordered to fight the people till they say, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. And whoever said, La ilaha illallah, Allah will save his property and his life from me. Fighting unbelievers is so essential to Islam that according to Muhammad, you cannot be a complete Muslim without visible battle scars on your body. Sunan Ibn Majah 2763, the messenger of Allah said, whoever meets Allah with no mark on him as a result of fighting in his cause, he will meet him with a deficiency. Muhammad didn't want to be a deficient Muslim, so one of his greatest desires was to die while fighting non-Muslims. Sahih al-Bukhari 2797, Muhammad says, by him in whose hands my soul is, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause and then come back to life and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred. I just want to fight and die and then come back so I can fight some more and then die again and then come back so I can fight some more and die again. Bloodshed, martyrdom, they're all I think about. Join us. We're the religion of peace. Again, there are many Muslims in the world who don't take these passages seriously. But as long as some Muslims are convinced that proper submission to Allah requires them to unquestioningly obey Allah's commands in the Quran and Muhammad's teachings in the Hadith, Islam will continue to be a threat to unbelievers.